Thanks for coming our last part of the tutorial. So I'm Yuji from Data Intelligence Lab at KAIST. So up to this point, our tutorial has covered important issues and representative papers in robustness and fairness. And in this section, I will introduce a recently emerging research direction, the convergence of fairness and robustness for responsible AI. So I will first describe the motivation and issues in this topic, and then cover three research directions, fairness-oriented approaches, robustness-oriented approaches, and equal mergers. At the end, I will go into depth and introduce an interesting research called FR Train that proposes a new model training framework for achieving both fairness and robustness. So let's see what motivation and issues are in this research direction. Traditionally, robust training and fair training have been studied by separate communities for different applications. However, these two research directions have the common purpose of fixing the inherent flaws in the data. For example, fair training aims to mitigate bias and discrimination in the data, and robust training tries to compensate for a noise and poisoning due to attacks in the data. What we have to focus on here is that such bias and noise issues are not completely separable and can even affect each other. So here, to address both issues, a new research trend has emerged where fairness and robustness techniques are integrated into the same framework. So now I will explain the key research issues in more detail and how they can be solved. So as discussed before, fairness and robustness are difficult to completely separate. So these two issues are more likely to influence each other in real world scenarios. So I will provide some examples that show how fairness and robustness issues can affect each other. So let's first consider fair training. In the previous part, uh, we learned about many fairness measures, including group fairness and unfairness mitigation techniques. A common assumption is that the sensitive group information is given and is completely reliable. And thus, most of the fairness algorithms have been proposed to use the given group membership. However, such group information can be noisy or sometimes entirely missing because the users may want to hide or mistakenly omit their group memberships, or data collection sometimes does not gather the group information due to various reasons. And um, as most fairness algorithms are not prepared to address such data quality issues, um, these fair-only frameworks are not robust against noise information and may perform uh, poorly as a result. So looking at the other direction, robust training may also have unfairness issues. So the main goal of robust training is to obtain high over accuracy in the presence of noise and poisoning in the labels or data. However, uh, most of these techniques assume that the data is unbiased, which may be a problem from a fairness perspective. So if the data has a biased distribution where say one sensitive group is much smaller than the other, then the robust training may only benefit the larger sensitive group and thus ha uh, have a disproportionate performance against the smaller group. So as a result, uh, even if robust training obtains over a high accuracy, it may also result in low fairness. So as you can see, fairness and robustness are closely related properties where only satisfying one may have a negative effect on the other. So naturally, the two topics are increasingly being studied together and we will provide a taxonomy of such approaches. So there are three natural approaches for addressing fairness and robustness together. So one is to make uh, fairness techniques more robust to noise, which we refer to as fairness-oriented approaches. Another is to make robustness techniques more fair against data bias, uh, which we refer to as robustness-oriented approaches. And finally, one can also address fairness and robustness in equal terms, and we call this approach an equal merger. So um, I will now go through each approach and introduce representative papers. So we first deal with fairness-oriented approaches. In this research, uh, in this research direction, uh, we want to make fair training more robust. So the research can be categorized into two scenarios, uh, which focus on the reliability of sensitive group information. 
So the first scenario is when the sensitive attribute is noisy, and the second scenario is when the sensitive attribute is fully missing. So both are very realistic scenarios as we discussed before. So the users may want to hide or mistakenly omit their group memberships, or data collection sometimes does not gather the group information due to various reasons like a legal restriction. So um, I'd like to introduce four papers, uh, two for noisy group information and two for fully missing group information. So uh, let's start with the first paper. Uh, so this work provides an interesting analysis which shows the influence of noisy group information in fair training. So the authors provide a theoretical analysis on how the performance of fair training is negatively affected when the group information in the training data is noisy. To show that, the paper first assumes we can build a perfectly fair model regarding the noisy group's G tilde. So this figure shows this assumption. The fair training is performed with the noise information, and as a result, there is no fairness violation regarding the noisy groups. Then the paper shows that the true fairness violation on true group C can be, uh, can be bounded by an upper bound of the distance between the true group C and noisy group C tilde. And here, the distance between Z and Z tilde uh, is defined as the total variation distance. We note that it is hard to directly measure the distance between Z and Z tilde due to the lack of information on the true distribution. Therefore, this paper uses a practical solution of measuring an upper bound of the total variation distance. So more details can be found in the paper. So um, this result provides a good intuition on how fair training will be affected when the group information is noisy. Another research suggests the new learning strategy that achieves fairness when the training data is noisy group information. So um, if the training data has noisy group information, fair training algorithms need to ignore the noises in the training data for achieving fair result regarding the clean true distribution. So this paper first focuses on the specific type of noise called a mutually contaminated distribution. So the mutually contaminated distribution assumes that each class in the noise data uh, is a mixture of their two classes. So here, the mixture amount is the same as the noise rate. So the group information uh, of the noise train data is a mixture of the two groups by a certain rate. Under this scenario, this paper shows that uh, when we know the noise rate, we can ignore the noises in the training data as well. So uh, let's say uh, we set the target unfairness tolerance uh, to be epsilon. And here, when the group attribute of the training data is noisy, we can achieve the target fairness by changing the tolerance to epsilon prime using the amount of noise gamma. So the paper provides a theorem that setting the scaling factor uh, based on the noise rates can estimate the true distribution. So uh, in the mutually contaminated distributions, the fairness constraint uh, on the clean distribution is equivalent to a scaled constraint on the noisy distribution. So uh, now we will deal with two papers that try to achieve fairness when the group information is entirely missing. So the first paper aims to improve minority performance without group information. So the typical empirical risk minimization called ERM minimizes the average loss of all data. Therefore, as in the figure, ERM-based training usually focuses on the majority group losses, which may lead to unfair results. On the other hand, uh, this paper aims to minimize the worst case group loss. This problem setting is intuitive, but there is a problem that since we don't know the group membership, we also cannot figure out the worst performing group. To address this problem, um, this paper uses a technique called DRO, Distributionally Robust Optimization, which allows to approximately minimize the worst case group loss. So here, DRO identifies the worst performing samples and gives more weights on them so that the worst performing group has better performance. And another recent paper solves um, the missing information issue using a different approach. So it makes a few assumptions before um, proposing a new algorithm. So the main assumption is that um, the unobserved uh, sensitive groups 
uh, sensitive attributes C are correlate, uh, correlated with the observed features X and the labels Y, because um, the features X may contain some proxies for the sensitive attributes, and the labels Y can be imbalanced between the groups, which can cause a specific group to correlate more with a specific label class. So this assumption might be strong as we cannot always ensure that C is correlated with X and Y, but this setting can be a reasonable starting point. And the next assumption is that there are some clustered reasons where the classifier is less accurate. So we can see such reasons in the below two example, and this paper calls this part computationally identifiable reason. So based on the two assumptions, um, these reasons are correlated with group C since they can be identified using X and Y. So um, if we can find such clustered reasons, then we can improve the model performance of the corresponding group. To achieve fair training under this scenario, uh, this paper proposes an adversarially related learning. So here, one classifier and one adversary train together. The classifier wants to predict the labels and the adversary finds computationally identifiable reasons and gives more weights on those reasons for the classifier's training. So based on this training framework, the classifier's accuracy on underperforming groups can improve more quickly. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next section. So the second direction is robustness-oriented approaches where the goal is to make robust training fair as well. So as I illustrated before, robust training is designed to improve the overall accuracy, but may discriminate groups. For example, small groups may have much worse accuracy than large groups. So robustness-oriented approaches have been proposed for three types of techniques. The first is when finding anomalies in the data. Here, um, the anomaly detection itself should avoid being discriminative. And the second is training a model without sparse features. Here, um, these features must be selected carefully to prevent hurting fairness. And the last is making the model training robust against noise. So here, the adversary training for robustness should avoid being discriminative also. So I will now introduce papers that propose robust oriented techniques for the three problem settings. So here, an interesting observation is that um, all of these have been published this year, which means that um, these are very new and timely works. So the first paper focuses on anomaly detection. So here, the paper observes that anomaly detection may be done unfairly on specific groups. So let's see the example here. So this figure shows the result of the deep SVDD model, which is a state-of-the-art anomaly detection technique. So the left images are predicted as normal, and the right images are predicted as abnormal. So we can see here that uh, the deep SVDD model tends to predict more females as normal and more males as abnormal. So to address this problem, the paper suggests a two-player game between a classifier and a fairness discriminator. So as the goal of the classifier is to predict whether the input image is normal or abnormal, this paper uses um, deep SVDD as the classifier. And here, the discriminator predicts sensitive groups based on the classifier's output. So this training between the two models uh, aims at making the classifier's outputs become independent of the sensitive group. So this is very similar to the idea in adversary devising mentioned in part two which introduces a two-player game to achieve group fairness. The next paper proposes a robustness-oriented technique when we are removing spears features for robust training. So the fairness issue here is that blindly removing these spears features uh, may disproportionate, uh, disproportionately affect group performance. So for example, if there are two groups and a spears feature that only affects one group, then removing that feature uh, may only improve the accuracy of that affected group, which can be viewed as unfair. To prevent such discrimination, this paper suggests a self-training based approach that mitigates accuracy degradation and the biased effects on the groups. So this framework needs to prepare an additional data set that has full features in addition to the data set that does not have spears features. 
Then the model training has two goals, minimizing the typical loads from the feature removed data set and reducing the model out difference over the two data sets. So by this training, uh, the model is now robust to the sprit features and also mitigates the occurrence degradation and the bias defect. So this approach is inspired by robust self-training, which leverages additional data uh, to make the model more robust on the adversarial cultivation of the features while not losing accuracy. And the last paper in this direction is about adversary training. So many works have been used adversary training to improve the model's robustness against adversary data. However, um, similar to the previous two scenarios, adversary training may also introduce accuracy and robustness disparities between groups. So this paper shows that such disparity occurs since adversary training um, has a tendency to favor the groups that are easier to be predicted. So to reduce such unfairness, this paper suggests um, the intuitive idea of adding constraints in order to equalize the model performances among groups. So by adding the disparate constraints, we can expect that the trained model has more uniform performances over the groups. So now we arrived at the next section. So the third direction is equal mergers uh, for fairness and robustness. So this approach aims to combine fair and robust training in equal terms um, to build a holistic framework that obtains the best of both worlds. So there are largely two research directions. One is the conventional direction of making sure model training is fair and robust at the same time. The other approach is to, make, uh, to take the role of an adversary and generate attacks that not only reduce accuracy, but also harm fairness. So in the first scenario, uh, the main challenge is to addressing non-trivial issues when combining fairness and robustness. And in the second scenario, the challenge is to design poisoning attacks that also understand uh, the fair algorithms and reduce fairness as well. So I will introduce um, two recent papers for fair and robust training and one paper for fairness targeted poisoning attacks. Okay, um, so the first research proposes a model training strategy for both fairness and robustness in a single framework. So the paper first observes that uh, fair only algorithms are indeed vulnerable to data poisoning, including label noises and um, group information noises. So the figure shows the performance of the well known fair algorithm called fairness constraints, where the x axis is accuracy and the y axis is fairness. And we can observe the uh, algorithms across various trade off on the clean data and poisoned data. So here, the blue circles are the clean data results, and the red stars are the poisoned data results. So the result uh, clearly shows that poisoning uh, significantly worsens the accuracy fairness trade off, which means that the curve shifts to the left. And the paper also observed a similar result in other state of the art fair only algorithms. To address this problem, the paper proposes a mutual information based approach. So this framework achieves fairness by adversarial learning between a classifier and a fairness discriminator. However, as we discussed, the training data can be poisoned. And to address this issue, uh, this framework adds another discriminator for robustness. So this approach has a mutual information based interpretation and achieve high accuracy and fairness even in the presence of data corruption. And later on in the following section, we will cover this research in depth. Another paper also observes that group dependent label noises um, may reduce both model accuracy and fairness. To address this issue, this paper suggests an idea that uses surrogate loads. And here, the goal of surrogate loads is to correct the label distribution by mixing the class wise losses. Uh, to achieve this goal, the surrogate loss utilizes the noise rates of the groups to mix the, uh, to mix the losses from y equal 1 and y equal 0. So by this mixing, the surrogate loss can estimate the true loss values, and so the proposed approach mitigates the negative impacts of the group-dependent label noises on accuracy and fairness. And as we discussed, there is another scenario in the direction of equal mergers, which is generating fairness-reducing attacks. 
So this study shows the uh, possible poison, poisoning methods uh, that attack um, the fair training of the model. So let's see this figure first. So here, the triangle and circle indicate each group and the color represent uh, each label class. Then let's assume the original distribution is fair and thus the trained model on this data is also fair. On this distribution, some poison samples can be added via the attack method. So this paper suggests the gradient-based attack method that tries to find the optimal attack locations to reduce the fairness the most. So the poisoned examples will then shift the classifier system boundary, resulting in worse fairness. So here, um, the output classifier now predicts uh, more samples of group A uh, as positive than the samples of group B. Okay, um, so far we have discussed three directions for convergence of fairness and robustness, which are very important for future responsible AI frameworks. And I would like to now explain FR Twin, which I briefly introduced a few slides ago, and in more detail as it is a state-of-the-art study for fair and robust training. And I also note that I'm one of the authors of this paper. Okay, so let's go back to FR Twin's motivation on why we need to consider fairness and robustness together. So here we first consider the situation in clean data. So if we train a common classifier on the clean data, the trained model will achieve high accuracy but can have very uh, low fairness. On the other hand, if fairness is considered uh, in the training, the model can achieve high fairness with a small decrease in accuracy. This accuracy fairness trade-off is well known in the literature. However, uh, when the data is poisoned and if we are not aware of this problem and just train the model, the accuracy of the non-fair classifier will also decrease, but the fair classifier will experience a much greater decrease in accuracy. It means that our fair classifier will be facing a worse trade-off in the presence of data poisoning. Therefore, it is necessary to consider fairness and robustness together to prevent critical issues that may occur in machine learning applications. And to this end, this study proposes FR training. We first summarize the main contributions of FR training. First of all, we propose a holistic framework for fair and robust training. And basically, FR training extends a state of the art fair only algorithm called adversary biasing that performs a two-player game to achieve um, high fairness. So we first provide a novel mutual information-based interpretation of such an adversarial learning. And then we apply this idea to architect an additional robust discriminator that uses a small uh, clean validation set for data sanitization. And since our framework uses a small yet clean validation set, we also proposed crowdsourcing method for constructing such clean data. And I will now give a high level explanation on how FR train works. So FR train assumes a classifier that says um, predicts recidivism. So this classifier gets the information about each person as input features and returns the decision. Also, there is a discriminator that distinguishes sensitive attributes based on the classifier's output. And here, the classifier tries to fool the discriminator so that the discriminator cannot predict the sensitive attribute uh, from the classifier's prediction. So by this two-player game, the classifier can achieve to produce more fair results uh, that have almost no correlation with sensitive attributes. And now, um, suppose the training data uh, is poisoned and the predicted labels are also affected by the poisoning. And to remove the impact of poisoned data, we put an additional discriminator for robust training. So the input of the second discriminator consists of the poison data and a small yet clean validation set. So like in the game with the first discriminator, the, uh, the classifier tries to fool the second discriminator to make the distribution of the predicted label become similar to the clean data. So based on this training, the classifier can obtain highly resilient results even with the poisoning. So in the paper, we also demonstrated how to construct clean validation set via crowdsourcing with majority voting and how to utilize it in FR train. We also released the crowdsource data set and you can get the information about them in our paper. 
So FR train is based on a mutual information-based interpretation that shows how our framework can achieve good fairness and robustness. And the detailed proofs are in the original paper. So if you have more interest in the theoretical background, I'd like to recommend seeing the paper. So here are the highlights of our empirical results. So in the compass data set, we compared FR train uh, with baselines, including the state-of-the-art fair-only and robust-only algorithms. And for a more fair comparison, we further improved the baseline by extending the fair algorithms using a state-of-the-art robust algorithm that first sanitizes uh, the data and then utilizes fair algorithms. So this improved baseline represents the two-step approach for fair and robust training. We note that here, our fairness measure shows better fairness when the value is higher, and it indicates a perfectly fair um, when the value is 1. So um, in, a, in the clean data, the fair-only algorithms and FR train achieve high fairness. However, if the training data is poisoned, we can observe that the vanilla logistic regression um, and fair-only algorithms shows large occurrence degradation. Also, the state-of-the-art robust algorithm that uses an additional clean data attains high accuracy, but it still has low fairness. And moreover, even in the two-step approach for fair and robust training, the accuracy degradation is still large. We suspect that uh, the robust training is discarding examples unnecessarily because it cannot distinguish poison samples that needs to be removed uh, from the biased samples that should not be removed. So um, this research shows that the two-step approach does not perform well either. On the other hand, uh, very interestingly, the performance of FR train does not decrease on the poison data. So this research clearly shows that a holistic approach like FR train is actually very effective to achieve both fairness and robustness. OK, um, so let's go to the FR train's demonstration. So through this link, we can go to the first uh, trains demo. Okay, uh, so this demonstration has three main parts, uh, pre-processing, uh, model training, and evaluation. So before we go through the uh, main parts, we have to download some necessary files, including the data set. And then we can define some Python libraries. And now uh, we arrived at the main part, the first main part, so we here, we uh, will load and process the data. So I'd like to uh, show here that there are two labels for the training data. So one for the clean uh, labels and one for the poisoned labels. We will use both labels in our experiment. And then uh, we can visualize um, the data as follows. So um, here, uh, this data is similar to the data we used in the part two, fair batch. But the only difference here is that uh, now the data is poisoned. So here, the black circles are um, the poison samples. So uh, we will test the FR train on the clean distribution and also on the poison distribution. Then uh, we can define a training function for FR train. So here, uh, we need uh, one classifier. Here we call the generator here. And two discriminators, each for fairness and robustness. And then uh, we will train all of these models in a holistic framework, as we described in the tutorial. And now uh, we can train the models. So uh, let's first consider the clean data distribution. So here, um, we can adjust the impacts of fairness and robustness by the lambda values here. So by this setting, uh, we will first set the robustness lambda uh, with some value, like say 0.1. Uh, and then we will vary the fairness lambdas from so, some small value to larger value. So by this setting, uh, we can observe the sequential fairness improvement. So the detailed uh, result will be discussed in the next part, so I will skip this. And then similarly, uh, we can run a fair train on the poison data. So one thing changed here is that the labels are poisoned now. So um, uh, since the labels are poisoned, uh, we have to increase the impact of robustness like, uh, by the increasing the lambda values. So here we set the lambda value for robustness as 0.4. And similar to the previous experiment, we can set the fairness lambda values from some small value to large value. 
Okay, uh, then we can similarly uh, observe the fairness improvement in the potent data set. Okay, so now uh, we can compare a fair train performances on the clean and potent data. Uh, so here is the trade off curves uh, between uh, trade off curves of FR train on two data sets. So here uh, the x axis shows accuracy and the y axis show fairness. Uh, here the blue circles are the clean data results and the red stars are the potent data results. And as a result, we can clearly see that the accuracy fairness trade offs uh, of FR train are similar for both data sets. So this research shows that FR train is indeed very effective um, uh, to achieve fair and robust training, even in the presence of data corruption. Okay, so now I'll go back to the uh, our tutorial. Okay. So here is the summary of part three. So recently, fair and robust training techniques are converging. And there are three directions for making fair training more robust and preventing robust training from hurting fairness and equal mergers of the two aspects. And for the equal mergers, we have introduced FR train, uh, which improves fairness and robustness in a holistic framework. And this framework is based on a novel mutual information based interpretation and enjoys the synergetic effect of fair and robust training. And this is a summary of the entire tutorial. In this tutorial, we have covered interesting research issues and techniques of robustness and fairness, which are essential elements for responsible AI. And here, the robust training compensates for noisy labels in the data, and fair training mitigates biases in the data. And in the last part, we have discussed the convergence of robustness and fairness, which is a critical direction that has recently emerged. And as the importance of responsible AI becomes larger, we believe that the convergence of fairness and robustness will be further actively studied in the near future. So thank you for coming to our tutorial and we hope that um, it was a meaningful time for you.